Um, I have a big pile of books. I'm not going to be judging them by their covers, which is one of my favorite things to do. I definitely judge every single book by its cover, and if I don't like the cover of a book, then I genuinely want to read it less. I feel like the book design has one job to do, and that's to make me want to read the book. Um, yes, Reba from Reba Reads tagged me in this a long time ago, <laughs> um, and like maybe the beginning of June, and then also Iggy from Literary Iggy tagged me in this too, and so I would like to apologise for the lateness, but thank you so much for tagging me, and it gave me an excuse to like go through my bookshelves and get really judgy. Um, we're working with limited stock because unlike Iggy who had an entire bookstore at her disposal to go through, my books are divided between my flat and my boyfriend's flat and I also loan a lot of my books to my sister. So we're just working with the ones that I have at home. So but I think I've managed to pull quite a few of them so we'll see how it goes. Also, I think I'm wearing the world's most creased t-shirt, but um, that's what we're working with today. Question one. I need my glasses. Question one is best color combination. Shit, I don't think these are like even in order, so you might have to bear with. Okay, best color combination. I have my... Joan Didion's by Fourth Estate, um, her nonfiction. So each of them has like a black and white photograph of Joan and then like a pastel color at the bottom. So we have Slouching Towards Bethlehem, which has this like really nice pale sagey green. Um, play it as it lays. Um, so this one is fiction, so it's not a picture of Joan. It's actually a picture of Eve Abbott. It has like a buttery peachy color. And then uh, South and West. Again, it's not fiction, so there's a gorgeous photo of Joan. I think this is my favorite one. And then it has a very pale lilac. Um, this one's hardback, which I hate hardbacks, but I think this one is gorgeous. I love it. And I think they work really well together, the combination of colors and also the pale pastels with the black and white photos. Um, I also picked out Drifts by Kate Zambrino. So again, black and white photo. This one is of the surface of some water and then you have this really nice buttery yellow um, at the bottom. And I think this is just a format that I really like as well because it's quite simple. I don't like really busy covers. They are not my thing. Um, but I really love the juxtaposition of the, like, the dark black um, with the type and then the nice soft buttery yellow, I think. They work really well and it's reversed on the spine. And then when I was going through all my books, I realized that every single question I was picking very simple covers. And that's just because that's what I'm drawn to, it's what I like. So I challenged myself to try and pull out a few that um, weren't so simple, you know, that had a little bit more going on. And so for color combination, I also picked Milk Teeth by Jessica Andrews. So the cover is this gorgeous close-in shot of some uh, stone fruit, like maybe a peach or a plum or a nectarine. I want to say it's a plum, but it could be any. And I think that uh, given what the book is about, it's most of it takes place in like the height of summer and it's um, about a relationship and you know, it's very tense and it's very, uh, like the heat is very sh shimmery, the romance is like really intense and so I feel like this glistening slice of plum kind of speaks to the hotness of the novel but then the powdery blue of Milk Teeth, like this nice kind of subdued colour on top of it, really lovely. I love, I love a good blue. Blue is the best colour. I feel like all artists and like sensitive people have an affinity for blue. Um, I mean, I think bluettes, come on. Okay, we're back. Um, I got a bit chilly. I know it's still summer, but I'm cold. Um, 
Okay, the next one was best typography. And sorry to be boring, but I've got to bring it back to John Didion and the Fourth Estate Editions. I am really fussy with typography and I've seen a few other videos and there have been some really good examples of typography, but I feel like my collection of books doesn't, I don't really, or the ones that I have here, like nothing's really jumping out at me. So I've gone like super simple, like, I also just love how her name looks in this really simple uh, type. Yeah, I think that like, you don't really need much more than seeing the name Joan Didion like that on your shelf to be like, hmm, I think I want to read that. Or, I mean, that's how I feel anyway. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a simple type can do a lot without doing much at all. It's not fussy, it's clean, and I feel like that reflects her writing. Like, it's very sparse and economical while still doing a very good job. And I feel like this type really um, echoes that well, so yeah. Okay, the next question is best simple covers. And there's literally only one answer to this question. And I think that most of you have been answering it wrong. Nathan answered correctly, Nathan from Nathan's Nook, but everyone else got it wrong. The only correct answer that I will be accepting on good simple covers is Fitzcarraldo editions. Um, so they're, Fiction is in this gorgeous, like, deep blue with the white type, and then their nonfiction is white with the blue type, and honestly, I don't need any more than that. That does it for me. Like, I'm happy. I'm so over the moon. I think that's gorgeous. They're not trying hard. You just trust that what is inside is good, and it is. Um, so this one that I have of Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tukarchuk is an older version, I think, because The Birthday Party, much newer. It It's like a slightly, very slightly, I don't even know if it'll come up on camera, but it's like a slightly darker blue, the newer ones, slightly uh, wider, and they have the French flats, and they feel thicker. Um, and then, the older ones, a bit slimmer. The type is different. This type, so much nicer than this one. Um, this just feels a bit busy, but I kind of like that it's like super top heavy and then there's all this negative space, like that's very cool. Um, and also no French flaps in this book. Feels a bit thinner and um, also their logo changed. So it's embossed on the front, which I don't think the camera's going to pick that up, but again, it's on the spine and you can see the different ones there. I prefer the older one, this one. But yeah, they're both nice. Uh, this is the only correct answer for simple covers. I will not be accepting any others. Okay, best end pages. So I don't really like when end pages have like an illustration or a design on them. Again, it's not for me, it's too, it's too busy. I just like a good color happening. And the best example I've seen recently is this gorgeous lavender. Like, I love that, it's so nice. And I feel like it speaks to the book really well. So the book is Strega by Johanna Ruby Holm. This is by uh, Lolly, the publisher. And it's like this really, strong forest green and then you have this delicate lavender and i feel like if you've read the book the lavender just makes so much sense as does the green because there's a lot of kind of nature involved but the lavender is like it's almost like musty in a way and like overly sweet and i feel like that really fits and i just love lavender in general so so much um yeah um, best map. I don't have any. <laughs> Not in the books that I have here anyway. Um, I'm now wondering if... Does To the River by Olivia Lang have a map in it? 
If it does, that's my answer, but I don't have my coffee. I think my sister has my coffee. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything with maps here and that's fine because as soon as I see a map, I panic. I can't read them very well. I'm terrible with directions and it doesn't really help me to see where things are on a map at all. So <laughs> we'll just skip that one. Um, best naked hardcover, I'm gonna bring it back to Straka. I much prefer um, paperbacks over hardbacks, but if you're gonna do a hardback, don't put it in a dust jacket and make it like a decent size. I hate how big hardbacks are. Like it will put me off buying a book. So I really wanna read uh, Biography of X by Catherine Lacey, but there is no way that I'm gonna purchase a book that is physically that big. It is massive. Like it's like an absolute slab of a book. You could hold a door open with that book. It is huge and it genuinely puts me off buying it. But Strega. This is so, like, this could fit in my bag easy. It's not, like, ridiculously heavy, and dust jackets are so annoying. Um, and I love when it's printed onto the cover when it's naked, um, the texture that it gives the illustration. Like, it just works so much better. So much better. Where are we going next? Um, tea. Best chapter headers. Um, you could say that this is um, one of my favorite books for lots of reasons because yet again we're coming back to Strega. Um, but it's just little crescent moons. The chapters aren't named, the chapters aren't numbered, there's not fancy illustrations. It's just little crescent moons and what could be sweeter than that? I love that. Such a good little detail. Um, best spine. Okay. God, I think I, these answers are all quite boring because they're like super simple, but as I said before, um, Joan Didion, these spines are really good. I love the colors. I love the simple type. Um, I love the way that they work together on my shelf. Um, I think my sister has another one. What does she have? I think she has my white album, which again is like this. Um, and is it pink? I think it's pink, like a really pale pink. Um, but yeah, I think they look so nice on my shelf together. Like, so simple, yet so effective. And in the same kind of vein, like super simple, Patti Smith. Um, yeah, I think they look gorgeous as well. These are by Bloomsbury. And I have some more Patti Smith and they have like different spines. Um, but these are the ones that I think look nicest. Like, it's just so effortless. Like, to me, that's not boring. It's just clean and I love it. Um, okay, I think this is actually the last one. And this is the one that I have the most um, options for. I have four different books and this is for best drawing. So first of all, I don't like the cover as a whole. It feels quite busy and I think it might just be because it has blurbs on the front. Can we like start a petition where blurbs must be on the back or um, on the inside? Actually, yeah, just put them on the pages on the inside. Great example of that being the pages and pages of praise for Olga in this one. We don't need blurbs on the front of a book. Please don't do it. Uh, check out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. This is by Vintage and I feel like if these two blurbs weren't there, yeah, I would like that a lot. But basically I love this cover because this is the vibe I want to give. Like, I love her. I want, I want to be her. She's so beautiful and so moody and so mysterious and this is the vibe that I want. Um, then next I have a book that I read not that long ago. The Weak Spot by Lucy Alvin, a bit of a feral drawing, super simple. Um, all the prototype books, was by Prototype Publishing, their books are really gorgeous. They're very good size, so they're quite small. And I love the texture of the covers and yeah, the very slight contrast between the author's name and type and the title. But yeah, I love this drawing so much. I would have that as a print in my 
flat. I love it. Another very simple kind of line drawing. Um, Terrific Mother by Laurie Moore. This is one of the Faber Stories um, books. So they're like really short stories and they're tiny little books. Um, super simple, love it. Um, it's giving drama, it's giving moodiness and it fits the book perfectly. This is the only Laurie Moore I've read actually and I absolutely loved it. And I don't understand why I haven't read anymore because this really like wowed me. Would highly recommend this tiny little book. And then the last one is Weird Fucks by Lynn Tillman. This is by Peninsula Press and I really love the artwork on the front. And I love that it's like very subdued, moody colors, um, but you've got this like screaming neon pink over the top. I, I love it. <laughs> and the kind of melancholic nature of the artwork um, mirrors the writing really well um yeah um she has a new there's another um lynn tillman that was like republished lately i think it's haunted houses and again it's got a really cool piece of artwork the white border and then i think that one has like screaming neon green over the top of it and i love that design i think it's great <laughs> um but yeah short and sweet there are some books from my bookshelves and I yeah I think I speak a lot about not liking covers and loving covers and I would like to be more conscious about the covers that I'm buying if I you know I'm kind of like curating my bookshelves and my collection of books um kind of like the chase of like finding nice editions of books um but a lot of the time that also just depends on your financial situation like can you really pay can you justify paying a little bit more just to have a nice cover um but i mean if that works for you then absolutely do it um because i do think if you're curating your bookshelves then new covers matter and from what i can tell from my bookshelves simple is effective don't go too busy it gives me a headache like my my favorite example of this is like book covers that work and book covers that don't work and it's a shame because the idiot by Elif Bataman is such a good book i love that book but the cover that i have the uk cover it it's horrendous and same for the um follow-up she wrote recently um either or so bad however the u.s cover is stunning so beautiful but i can't get them here so it's like do i pay like extra just to be able to get them sent over here part of me is like yes that's absolutely what you want to do but the other part is like come on be serious be sensible with your money um but yeah if you're in the states then i'm very jealous that you get those stunning covers because the ones that we have here are shocking absolutely shocking um Again, thank you so much Ripa and Iggy for tagging me because it was actually really fun to go through my shelves and get super judgy about all the covers. <laughs> um, and I feel like pretty much everyone has done this video, but if you haven't, then I would really, really like you to do it because I have had so much joy watching people and seeing their answers to these questions. Um, yeah, so this is my invitation to you to do this tag if you haven't done it <laughs> and hopefully I will see you very soon. Bye!